chairperson. Mr Firth, my question is directed at you, of course. I'd like to know if your company has contracts with private companies. Yes, we do. In what sector? In what particular sector? Yes, we, yes, we did, rather. In what particular sector or sectors? Sorry, apologies, I, I missed the last one. Okay, wh what kind of activities are they involved in? Oh, general IT, oh, the private companies? Mm -hmm. There are IT software firms, they are um, system integrators. Parlons maintenant de la qualité de votre... Let's now talk about the quality of your work with uh, Arrive Can. What are your thoughts about the final product with all the ups and downs, the vicissitudes uh, that uh, Canadians had to come to grips with uh, throughout this application and its process? I think understanding the, the circumstances where the whole of Canada and the whole of the world was in um, and the fact that this went through 170 renditions and they were delivered always on time, I think our work was... Was, was very was, was done very well and I, I feel like the application was a success um, I believe it was 260 I believe the application was a success we had 200 I think 260 million times the app was open I, a success you're, you're you're saying that your application was a success you're serious now right I think I think it did exactly what it was supposed to it was to oh, help right. open the borders it, it was helped to streamline the process it was to be a low touch um, application. I think if we look at those, you know, it was always there was a moving target. There was PHAC was sending out new policies every month Hello. or so. Okay, Mr. Firth, what do you have to say? Mr. Firth, what do you have to say to the over 10,000 people who have joined a class action lawsuit because your app led them to have be subjected to a quarantine that they weren't supposed to be subjected to? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it's very unfortunate for those 10,000 people, but I cannot comment on things that happen within the application. Pardon? I provide the resources. In Madam, Monsieur Nessa, no. Vous avez... Hold on a sec. Hold, hold on a sec. You said that it was a success. And yet, thousands of Canadians were affected in this way. Over 10,000 Canadians have filed a class action against your app because your app led to a quarantine that they should never have been subjected to. So why are you washing your hands of this and passing the buck? I'm sorry, I really have no comment on this. That's not my line of expertise. Thank you. Un unbelievable. If it's not your bailiwick or expertise, whose is it if it's not yours? We were not involved in the architecture. You understand this, this project was, was derived and, and project managed by the CBSA. My God. How are you going to tell these over 10,000 people that you raked in profits of millions of dollars with this application? Is it really worth $2.5 million in uh, windfalls? We're talking about 10,000 people who were quarantined that never should have been because of your app. That's, sorry, can you repeat? My headphones just blow. Okay. Listen, you asserted earlier that you made a profit of $2.5 million. That's, uh, those are your figures. We know that the AG doesn't think uh, so, well, but we'll take what you said at face value. That's $2.5 million for 40 hours per month. You've made a profit of $2.5 million for this app, and yet I'm telling you that there are 10,200 Canadians that were subject to quarantine when they shouldn't have been because of your app, because that is what has occurred, and you're saying that it was a success. Was it really worth $2.5 million profit, uh, that kind of success story? Uh, like I said previously, I, I don't make that decision. The government obviously sees value in what we do. That's why we were working there for three years. So, where does the buck stop if it doesn't stop with you? 
again, I did not make the decision. The government sees value in what we do. We were not part of architecting this application. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Over to you, uh, Mr. Jawari, please. For Mr. Genwis, for five minutes, please. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Chair. Mr. Firth, this is a sad example of corruption and potential criminality, but it also exposes incredible waste uh, within uh, this government, especially in the area of procurement and contracts to well-connected consultants for, in many cases, no discernible work. So I want to try, in my round of questions, to follow the money that was spent. The Auditor General's report estimates $59.5 million spent on the app and further that your company received directly $19.1 million of that money, even though by your own admission, all that you did was recruitment of other individuals and companies. That's an incredible sum for, quote unquote, recruitment. Uh, but you told the committee that the Auditor General's information is not correct. Uh, you dispute the $19.1 million figure. You say it was only $11 million. Is that correct? The application bill, that's correct. Okay, so so what happened to the missing $8.1 million? What do you think accounts for the discrepancy? Well, so you'll see in my, my evidence package, we've actually invoiced CBSA in three years, close to $22 million approximately. I'm not, dis I'm not disputing the fact that $19 million was an invoice through my company monthly. I'm disputing that that $19.1 million is completely attributed towards the Arrive Can application build. Okay, so your testimony is that you've received $22 million from CBSA over the same period. You simply uh, are disputing the categorization of it as being uh, all related to Arrive Can. Uh, it, what, 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 what I would add to this in terms of of, frankly, the absurdity is that uh, the invoices that you've submitted to this committee, some of which are are very kind of vague and unclear in terms of what they actually refer to, but they add up to nine point six million. So you've shown this committee invoices for nine point six million. You've also said uh, you got eleven million uh, that you you categorize as as, as related to arrive cam and twenty two million uh, in total. Uh, so how do you explain the discrepancy between what you've shown us invoices for and what you said uh, was uh, you actually received? So first of all, the twenty two million is not just solely arrive can. There was multiple projects we were working on during the pandemic. These were not arrive can contracts, right? There were three. Yeah, the Auditor General says projects. they are, but but I, I was asking specifically about the difference between the nine point six million and the eleven million. You said you said you got eleven million, but you didn't provide us with eleven million worth of invoices. We we sent hundreds of pages of documents over. I can follow up and make sure that those ones would result to eleven million dollars. Yeah. I've done this again. Like hundreds, hundred, hundred, hundreds of pages doesn't absolve you of the need to provide accurate information, uh, sir. Uh, and just in terms of of the difference between the nineteen point one and and the eleven million. Um, you 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 started off your your testimony by saying that every everybody's. Uh, lying and saying mean things about you. The media is wrong. The MPs are wrong. Um, but you're also now saying the Auditor General is wrong. Uh, what, what are we as a committee to make of the fact that you uh, want us to believe that everybody is wrong in their figures except you, and yet the invoices you've sent to the committee don't add up to the figure you said was spent uh, on or was given to you in relation to Arrive Can? Yeah, I also said as well, it's uh in my opening statement, that is this testimony and this committee that have also had death threats against myself and my wife, which had photographs of my kids being sir, taken. Sir, I'm, 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 I'm looking for too. accurate information on the amount of taxpayers' money that went to, to your company. Um, I, now, we've, uh, invoiced, can I, we've invoiced 1,500 times $22 million. Well, uh, the, the invoices do not line up with the figures so you've done. given. Sir, sir, I'd like to know, uh, for, for all... Um, the money that you earned on this project um, a, a, after expenses, what what was the total amount of money that you and your partner took home for, for from this project? I have the I haven't got the exact numbers after taxes, after expenses, through dividends, but I've told you it's two point approximately two point five million dollars each. Approximately each. No, no, in total. That's, okay, that's the so twenty percent. So you, you, you and your partner became millionaires through this project, and 
you want us to believe that all of the rest of it, in addition to the two two point eight million, were expenses, even though all you did is recruit. I mean, how expensive is a LinkedIn uh, account these days? Two point five million dollars over two years is one point two five divided by two people. How many hours? How many hours did you spend working on 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 sending the LinkedIn invitation, sir? has no bearing on this project does it? I, I i think it does how how much how much you earn for what work is the question we're asking right and 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 the numbers don't line up and just a, and just a quick question and a quick answer please yeah how, how many how many hours did you spend working on this project in exchange for the millions of dollars that you and your partner uh got for got for the the act of recruiting would have been between 30 to 40 hours every month with the invoicing, with doing timesheets, with doing accounting, with doing paying paying our resources. And so, so what makes you so that lucky our, that, that you got this time, Mr. opportunity? Uh, Genuous, thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Baines, please go ahead. It doesn't sound like it's a relationship that's been going back and forth many times. But the quote is literally, I just want to make sure he gets taken care of, right? Yeah. Um, that, that, could just, that, could, that could be recognition for a job well done. That doesn't guarantee a promotion. Okay, it, it reads to me like something more than recognition uh, being taken care of. Um, so a quick question, like Mr. Backrack, please. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, cede my time, Mr. Chair, and dive into the next question next round. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Mrs. Block, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Misty's were at the table. And so, look, you would have been meeting with public office holders in order to, to set this criteria. They are accountable to Parliament. And so I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked earlier. I'm trusting that you've had an opportunity to speak with your lawyer. Who did you communicate with from the Government of Canada? And I well, need the names. Well, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for the question. So let me address the um, about the requirements being overly restrictive. I think I've heard in testimony and read in reports that uh, the e-portal did a CPSS search, and there were actually 40 qualified vendors that could bid on this RFP. And actually, I think 10 even showed interest. Um, so it seems a little subjective after the fact to call it restrictive uh, when there were already 40 qualified vendors who could actually respond to that. And secondly, um, I've had a chance to speak with my lawyer, and uh, I'm st sticking to what my line of is with regards to this is under investigation by the RCMP, and therefore I cannot interfere with that. Mr. Chair, I'm wondering if you could provide us with any clarity on that. Thanks, Mrs. Block. Mr. Firth, I understand what you're saying, but it's it's a it's a very direct and simple uh, question, and we do have rules, and I'm going to refer back to it. Witnesses must answer all questions which the committee puts to them. You may object to a question asked by an individual committee member. However, the committee agrees that the question uh, to be put to the witness, the witness is obliged to reply. Um, actions a witness refuses questions may re be reported to the House. And I, I, I don't, I think I can speak for everyone. We don't want to get to that point, but I think it's a fair question. And I don't think it's one directly related to any potential investigation. I, I, if I read it right, it's, the commentary that um, GC helped write the requirements that you in turn won the contract for. And I think that's what we're looking for it is, if I correct Mrs. Block, is, you know, who did you discuss oh, this with the, uh, the department with? Yeah, so, I, so again, I've, I've, the first three contracts, the names have already been provided back in October of 2022. And I promised the, um, the committee member that I'll get the fourth person to them after this meeting. Okay. So I want, just for greater clarity, um, I'm looking for the individuals or individual that you would have met with in developing the criteria, not who signed off on the contract in this particular case. I do want that name, but now I'm asking who did you sit at the table with to develop the criteria for this contract? And again, Apologies, but uh, after speaking with my lawyer, my, my stance still stands the same with the RCMP investigation pending. I don't interfere with that. Well, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure where we go with that, but I'm sure we'll discuss that uh, 
in due time. I'm going to then turn some of my questions to um, a slide deck for a possible app in March 2020 that you were asked to create. It's my understanding uh, that this deck was presented to Mendon, who is a key government official that was involved in Arrive Can, and that particular app had a Distill Mobile logo. Um, if uh, if that is correct, who asked you to pro to provide the deck? I'm sorry. Can you sorry? Can you please repeat the question? Sure. You were asked to put together a slide deck for a possible app in March of 2020. Who asked you to provide that deck? I'm more than happy to get that to you, Mighty. I was not aware of this question coming up. So March 2020, to still that. Yep, I can get that to you. Okay. Um, so you were contacted from the government, and you were told you are receiving a contract for Arrive Can. Is there anyone at the CBSA that would have to declare a conflict of interest on contracts that you are bidding on? No, there's not. Okay, so you are not related to anyone at the CBSA? Correct, I'm not. Okay. Are you related to anyone working for a government department or any public office holder? All of my family is in the UK. Okay, thank you very much. Let's uh, turn now to Bob Brennan. He is an Ottawa-based consultant, and it is my understand him. You know, it is my understanding that you know him professionally. Is that correct? It's correct. Do you know him in any other capacity? No, I do not. Okay, Mr. Brennan's wife worked at Procurement Canada. That's the department responsible for oh. government contracts. Were you aware of this? Not until now. Okay, just, I guess, another convenient coincidence. Who were your contacts with the government at the following departments and agencies? We have Canada Border Services Agency. It's my understanding there are 134 contracts there. Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada, 24 contracts, and Employment and Social Development Canada. So who are your contacts with all of these departments? Um, I'd like to provide all of those details after this meeting, please. I would not like to speak about it publicly, just how this committee is going. So if you wouldn't mind, I would provide that information to you after this meeting. Um, we're out of time anyway, so perhaps we can get back to that in the next round, or it can be uh, provided in writing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Firth, for uh, for your testimony here today. Um, I wanted to ask you. You had you had stated that on what every other of the six hundred and thirty five other firms do. Point of order, Chair. Um, yes, go ahead, sir. Um, the witness is refusing to answer questions under the auspices of uh, a hypothetical, according to him, and um, he is required to answer the questions put to him by this committee, uh, unless I'm mistaken. And, and if I am mistaken, I just ask for you to, uh, uh, to, to correct my understanding. But the witness is, is required to provide this information, and his lawyer would be able to tell him that it wouldn't prejudice a police investigation. Yeah, it's a fair point. We do require witnesses to answer questions, um, actually from Looking at the item from swearing of witnesses, witnesses refuses, okay. Refusal to answer questions of failure to reply truthfully may give rise to a charge of contempt in the House. Uh, we will get to the next um, intervention, which is Ms. Atwin, and then we will have a chance with Mr. Dotel, but we will be having a break after the next round that perhaps uh, Mr. Firth can uh, confer with uh, his lawyer and we can get back to this issue. Good Mr. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mr. Backrack. Mr. Deltel, please go ahead for five minutes. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Now, obviously, we want to get to the bottom of what is the worst uh, financial scandal of the history of the Government of Canada. This is a contract that was supposed to start at about $80,000, ended up in an orgy of spending of over $60 million, uh, which is over 750 times more expensive than what was expected. This is not right. Canadians need to understand why there was this boondoggle that they're still paying for to date. We know that GC Strategies was threatened uh, by, uh, by, with arrest uh, regarding testifying here. Uh, uh, 
which attests the fact that uh, there was no confidence in the fact that you may have refused to testify before this committee, but I'm afraid you have an obligation to do so. Mr Chairperson, this is not the first time that Mr Firth is testifying. There were two previous testimonies. First, regarding the testimony, your previous testimony, did you lie, yes or no, in your previous evidence? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? I was at some, some feedback on my on my microphone. Avez-vous mat? Did you lie in your two previous appearances before this committee? Yes or no? Um, for two, can we? I made a mistake with a with a uh, cottage and a chalet last time I was here. Okay. And again, it's not a, it's not a lie. I mean, the actual irony the irony is that uh, it was referred to as a cabin. And puis l'hospitalité avec uh, le whisky sur vous. And what of the whiskey and the hospitality involved? Yeah, there's been previous testimony where there was whiskey tasting. And I think it was mentioned that uh, that was put out to government officials and it was also put out to contractors. And those government officials have since said that they got permission from their superiors and paid their way. Well, now, the, the contract tel now, the contract as it was awarded, is it, it's the contract that you executed. At what point did you realise that $80,000 was insufficient and that things were starting to cost a lot? At $1 million, $2 million, $3 million? At what point did you clue into the fact that uh, this was going to go through the roof and it was going to become exceedingly expensive? So again, thank you for the question. Like that, that's not my determination. My the first contract award was for two point three five million dollars. That was the one that was the the first COVID contract. Subsequently, there there were amendments that were made. You have to bear in mind. I think testimony mentioned that national security exemptions only were to last for three months. So there had to be a decision made by the government to either put a larger number and keep doing amendments versus keep going back and retendering and redo it, which isn't a fast process. We know that to retender and restructure a contract every three months. My understanding was it did jump. The, the one contract was uh, talking about that went from 2.35 and it went to 13.9. But my understanding was every time there was amendment, it was published on buy and sell, which has 635 other companies can challenge. And it was also put in front of the house and MPs voted in the house every single time there was an amendment so it wasn't it wasn't like i knew but everybody knew that the the, the prices were raising like qui s'assurait de la who monitored the quality of the work that you were doing overnight you can't just go from $80,000 to $60 million without some someone sounding the alarm bells and saying something is awry who monitored the quality of your work we had four or five government officials that was monitoring the quality of our work. Where, you know, we we were not. There were other prices associated to just arrive can and the application bill that we're not privy to. So we were not part of the nineteen point one or the eleven million to the sixty. We were from the zero to the eleven or nineteen point one, depending on what you which which article you want to read. Now, when COVID struck, of course, there were going to be exceptions. Everyone understood understands that. But there's a distinction to be made between being very active and uh, inflating the bill to the tune of 700 times larger exponentially. That's what Canadians wanted to get to the bottom of. When did you realise that this was a phenomenal cost overrun and yet it was lacking in quality? At what point, please? Um, well, first of all, we, we've submitted over 1,500 invoices monthly. So Again, I want to get the illusion of everybody's thinking right now. We were never given a check for $20 million on day one. We've done 1,500 in monthly approved submitted invoices for the last three years to get to whatever amount you want to listen to, 19.1 or 11. Um, we were not responsible for alerting any alarm bells. We were performing. Uh, we hit 171 releases of the application on time. Every time public health agency changed the policy, we'd have to amend the the. the uh, the, the application and that there in itself, the fact we were hitting all of our targets meant that we were doing a good job, but we also don't control what the budget is. That's that's out of our realm. Vous faisiez, ouais, vous that is votre propos. I, I, our time. Okay. Mr. Zawari, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Mr. Fertz, uh, I'd like to focus on three areas.